Nick, I know we're having coffee. I took some coffee out of the coffee machine in the kitchen. It's great, but you're having instant coffee. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm glad you noticed, Joris. And I'm actually uh, conducting a little experiment here, looking at uh, freeze-dried coffee and see if I can taste a difference. Why would you do an experiment like that? Yeah, well, a, that's a good question. And, you know, the reason why I'm doing this is we had a, a conversation earlier this week with, uh, with a client. We were talking about, uh, you know, storage of reagents, particularly in a in vitro diagnostic and making sure that there was uh, proper care and consideration into the, uh, the lyophilized product. So this is coffee though, and you're speaking about reagents right now, how sure. to relate it? Yeah, so, so that's a great, great point. So I, I'm looking at this as a proxy for um, understanding the, the freeze drying process. And, and I was um, you know, kind of thinking about it in that conversation and it got me thinking about, you know, and I've used freeze dryers in the lab before, you know, these small scale things, but I was trying to figure out just the, the concepts uh, that go mm -hmm. into that. Uh, and so I did a little bit of reading. I'll share, with that, share that with you here. And uh, the, did you know that freeze drying, actually there's four uh, key steps to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, beyond that, you actually need the freeze drying machine. And that's a, a machine that consists of, a, uh, in some cases, a room as large as this one, if you mm -hmm. can believe it, the industrial ones. And uh, that's the primary chamber. There's the, the third part, which is the, um, all the machinery, you know, you need refrigerants, pumps, that sort of thing. And then the other uh, critical piece is the condenser. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and that's to extract out the water. And so what happens is uh, you take a product, in this case, you know, it could be any sort of reagent that you want to protect from the, re remove from the cold chain, for example, mm -hmm. the product we are talking about. In this case, we'll talk about coffee. Um, and so you'll go through four stages to freeze dry this. The first stage is the, uh, the pre-treatment stage. And that takes a lot of analytics, it turns out. You have to understand if you had to add little components to this to help preserve the taste or the feel or lower the temperatures you need to, or I guess, pardon me, raise the temperatures to, to freeze that mm -hmm. to save some, some cost. Uh, and then the first stage is, is uh, or sorry, that's the first stage. The second stage is freezing and you wanna get the product down below uh, what they call the triple point, and that's where uh, solids, liquids, and gases all intermingle. It's quite cold, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. uh, and so you want to get that that frozen. And the way you freeze it, and how you get to that, the time it takes to do that, there's a lot of science involved in that. You want to form uh, fairly large crystals in some ice crystals in some cases. So there's nice pores that can exist to allow the, the, the water vapor to come out. Uh, but sometimes for some biologics, that's, that's a bad thing. You know, mm -hmm. ice is sometimes bad. Uh, the third step is the primary drying, right? It's freeze drying. Uh, and in that step, what happens is uh, we're gonna have a vacuum in there that's going to uh, really drop the, the pressure. And there's a little bit of heat goes into that system and the, any water that's in here vaporizes, goes to the condenser department uh, that gets condensed, takes out about 90% of the, of the liquid. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the secondary drying step. So they take the vacuum down a little bit more, a little bit more heat, and that gets the last 10% out. Uh, and the final step, depending on what the product is, you blow sterile air through, seal this thing up, and that becomes your, your stable product. And of course, uh, the reason why we want to take water out of, out of products is to really pr to extend the shelf life. If there's water in there, we're all biology. You can get degradation from enzymatic processes, breakdown yeah. uh, exactly. from microorganisms is really mm -hmm. the, the main thing. And so having that water out of there, having it dry, none of that happens. So that's why we want to do that. So you go through this entire elaborate process also to retain the properties of the of the coffee in this case or reagents in, in, uh, in the case of absolutely. Of assay. So then we can re yeah. rehydrate it in the case of our assay or in this case, I can rehydrate with some hot water and enjoy a, a delicious beverage. I'm uh, curious to find out uh, if this uh, this experiment, how this experiment works out. <laughs> As am I, so we'll yeah. have a little taste and we'll <laughs> see. Mm. Yep, yep. freeze-dried coffee, it's uh, always missing a little something there. I can uh, perhaps a little bit more effort in the uh, <coughs> proper pre-freezing pre process. process. There you go. There you go. Well, thanks, Nick. That was very informative. Yeah, thank you. Have a great have day. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>